Good morning. The subject that the Lord Jesus wants me to speak on today is being ashamed of Jesus Christ. Now almost all Christians will say that they'll never be ashamed of Jesus Christ. But you know, Jesus sometimes wants us to stand up under very difficult conditions and testify of him, be a witness of him. Here in UK, the Lord got me, first of all, for the first seven years of my ministry here to start from nothing, from just one person, a Christian center, a church, Bible school, and even a children's school. <clears throat> I did this. It was very hard work. And then the Lord asked me to do a mission for him, to stand up and proclaim in this nation and in Europe. Not just the name of Jesus, but for them to repent and to turn back to God and turn back to values. <clears throat> Little did I know that the end time would come upon us as it is right now, where the beast is already in Europe and the Antichrist is already floating around this world. And the false prophet is here. <clears throat> Everything is set for the end of time to come. But for 15 years we had to preach the word of God with anointing power and authority on the streets of Britain. And let me tell you, every person hated us. Every church turned against us, and the police arrested us more than 350 times. Some of us were in court for 50 different charges of disturbing the peace, uh, upsetting public, all sorts, four major different charges, uh, obstructing a police officer in course of his duty. We saw such corruption in the police and such corruption in the judiciary here that it's hard to believe that such things existed in Britain, but it's a sign of the times. When we started to get become arrested, we have five or six hundred people surrounding us. Uh, police had never seen this before, didn't know how to deal with it, just decided the easy option was to arrest the preachers. <clears throat> the crowd was normally angry. They didn't want to turn back to values. They didn't want to honor their father and mother. They didn't want to listen to the police. And that's all we were preaching. We were preaching it, though, with power and authority and uh, boldness under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, <coughs> many people left us during that time. When the police came to arrest us, some, some of, of the preachers walked on the other side of the road and disowned us. Many turned away from us because it's too hard to keep going to prison every weekend. Their families were in jeopardy. Their finances were in jeopardy. Their, their uh, respect was in jeopardy. But you know, Jesus Christ doesn't make any easy options. The glory of God doesn't come cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. He expected everybody to stand for the truth and to stand for the name of Jesus Christ. And hundreds of people left us, finding all sorts of excuses and justifications for their cowardice prophesying themselves before they leave that they sh that nobody should leave and then doing exactly what they prophesied that we should not do making a mockery of the word of the Lord we understood it you're just being a coward you're just afraid we understood it we had to despise it how could we not despise it how are we gonna be strong if we can't despise that we don't despise the people, we know fear. All of us have been subject to its rule. Fear comes from the devil. We just determined not to listen to him and not to submit to him. Come what may, even if it killed us. And it really jolly well nearly did. Some of us lost everything, right down to the families. But Jesus expected us to stand for him. In the book of Revelations, when he addresses the churches, he says, those that stand and until death, I'll give them a crown of life 
and I'll make them rulers of the nations. We had to do that, and some of us lost everything, one way or another. All hell gets let loose. The whole of hell fights you. The church is so weak, so corrupt, so compromised, so full of sin <coughs> in this nation. A well-known malady known throughout the world. That they turned against us and colluded with the police to try and get us arrested. We preached on the Wakefield Cathedral steps. The priests called the police. Nobody wanted the difficult option. Everyone wanted the easy option. Go and stand on the other side of the street when the police come. But you know heaven watches, and God watches, and the angels of God watch, and not even one second of those events is not recorded and kept. Jesus said, Whoever is ashamed of me, when I come with my holy angels, I'll be ashamed of him. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? It's not a case of just men pleasing. It's a case that you turned against what you knew Christ Jesus had called you to do. Like Judas and like Peter, you gave in to the fear factor. Having been mollycoddled and brought up doodums on the spoilt Christian society, you found it impossible not to be ashamed of your Lord and your Master, Jesus Christ. You found it impossible, and you turned against this pastor and the elders and the leaders and anybody else who was standing, because it was an easy option. Suddenly people were called to go to other churches by Jesus. Suddenly people were called to do things for their families. Suddenly people were called and Jesus said, you're unfit for my kingdom. You're unfit for my kingdom. You are not fit for my kingdom. You see, you can be born again. You can do whatever you want. You can get your bus ticket to heaven. But let me tell you, these principles remain forever. Whoever is ashamed of me, Jesus says, I will be ashamed of him before my Father in heaven. You see, it doesn't just say all oh, murderers and adulterers will be thrown into the pit of fire. It says all oh, cowards. Now, whether or not you go to heaven after shaming the Lord, that's between you and Father God. And you can justify your actions by saying that that pastor was weak or corrupt or whatever you'd like to call him. People called us cults. People who had been with us for years called us cults just to justify their action, but you see it doesn't cut any ice in heaven, it doesn't hold water before the judge of all mankind and all spirits. He sees everything. He is the God who sees. Jehovah Roy, the God who sees everything. We were commanded <coughs> to give our lives for Jesus. Those who lose their life will gain it, he said. Those who gain their life will lose it. You have to give up everything when you follow him. Everything, right down to your family, right down to your own life also. This is not an easy option. We can't advertise the kingdom of God as a money-making gimmick and a healing benefit. It's not what God can do for you, but it's what you can do for him. Stand, proclaim the name of Jesus. Don't ever be ashamed if you have to die, die. But never, never, never give in. The reward is far greater than the sacrifice. God bless.
Cassio.